I title today's Neville Goddard Conversation, Transmitting Your Thoughts to Others. This technology, we could call it, has always existed because consciousness is one. Thus, everyone and everything is actually interconnected from the one source, consciousness. Although perhaps the physical bodies and things may not appear that way to the five senses. What we are speaking about in this video is telepathy. Going beyond the visible world and communicating in imagination with each other from which it may play out with physical technology or some other means or a combination to allow it to happen. For example, a few months ago, I came across a video on YouTube that said something like, how to manifest a text from a specific person. And I followed their instructions to try it, and it worked. A friend who I did not speak with for a few years sent me the text. Now, this may seem surprising or completely normal based on your experience of this information, so let's explore further. Neville states, The subconscious transmits ideas from mind to mind through telepathy. Now, this happens all the time. Just observe the people around you and track it back to the state that you're in. That's a form of thought transmission. It's only a matter of your degree of self-persuasion of the state that you desire. We don't persuade others, we let them be, and they reflect our state. You have all the power. Now, I was told this growing up, yet I felt an experiential shift into deeper understanding in 2005. I was doing this Cisco technology certification for my IT career. If you're not familiar with it, it's the technology that allows computers and servers to communicate with each other on the internet, behind the scenes, we could say. So at the same time, I was reading a spiritual book, which I don't remember the name, that was saying the exact same thing that they were describing in the technical manuals, although they were saying the same thing differently. One we could say esoteric and the other exoteric. It was an amazing feeling, bliss, I'd say, to experience the reconciliation that they were saying the same thing, which brought me to the realization of how the universal technology already exists and technologists bring them into a tangible format so others can have a similar effect whether they understand what we're talking about here or not. Those who may not consciously apply the invisible power for their initiatives, although unconsciously they do. Now, as you know in my videos, I encourage the utilization of both like we're doing right now via this YouTube video. And actually, all of that happens automatically done for you by assuming your wish fulfilled and operating from that premise. So although we work with both kinds of technology, I find that the spiritual technology still remains the most powerful as it is the source of it all, called upon for application by the individual's faith, which is the ability to assume an idea and accept that suggestion, acknowledging that that's the way it is and others show up to reflect that state. And so he says, consciousness includes a subconscious as well as a conscious part. The infinitely greater part of consciousness lies below the sphere of objective consciousness. So the individual subconscious blends into oneness with consciousness, and what we do is the inner act to consciously suggest the experience to ourselves, and they receive your transmission, like one computer to another, although we're human beings. As we share the same consciousness, individually expressed into physical bodies. My friend growing up actually knew about this. I don't know where he learned it. Brilliant guy. Trendsetter, I would call him. When we were teenagers, we were into doing up our cars. And whatever he did on his car, people all over the city would start doing the same thing to their cars. It was magical. I remember one time I was dating someone and was upset she wouldn't call me. He'd walk by and say, watch this. She's going to call now. Trust me. And sure enough, the phone would ring. So now it's become a normal way of life. You intend a thing and it happens. Just like that, as the experience becomes normalized through applying this information, which by engaging with this video, you are already applying this information, such as the law. Simply be aware of it occurring and track it back to the cause within yourself. He says, therefore, get into the spirit of these mental conversations and give them the same degree of reality that you would a telephone conversation. There holds the key. We enter into the spirit 
For spirit is one in imagination, and for that moment it is reality, and then it happens in the physical world. We mentally carry on a conversation from the premise of how you'd like them to relate to you and let the subconscious take care of the rest some way, somehow, as we let it happen. Now let's explore this further and relate the example with my friend to articulate what I believe is going on now that I've been applying this information for a while, including components of Neville's information. So number one, and what I believe is the most important, is acknowledging that consciousness is non-divisional. We can only create self-imposed illusions of separation in mind, creating unnecessary resistance inside when it comes to accepting our own self-suggestions in regards to telepathy. Number two, Neville mentions that imagination is the eternal body where we experience existence, or we could say potential existence to bring into physical form. Thirdly, anyone outside of your physical experience exists in your imagination because you experience them in your imagination if they are not around. Well, actually the same when they're around, yet for the sake of our conversation, let's say they are not currently around, five sensory speaking. Since the eternal body is imagination, we imagine them to be a certain way or have a certain experience with them in imagination, accept that suggestion, and they show up that way. You see, with my friend, I trusted what he was saying. He played a role to help me realize it was also within the woman I was dating, to desire to connect. It was my own illusions of separation that caused it to play out in undesirable ways. So when it played out, what was also interesting was when she called, what I was imagining about what she was saying was determining what was happening next. I ended up reverting back to my previous state and the conversation would end. And so my friend would every now and then do the same thing and the cycle would repeat. Hot and cold, as some may refer to this, it was all my own making. See, the cause is within. People show up playing our state of consciousness, and if our state wavers, so do they appear that way. That's another way of looking at telepathy. Neville states, Your consciousness is the light reflected on the mirror of your mind and projected in space to the one whom you think. By mentally speaking, to the subjective image in your mind, you cause the mirror of your mind to vibrate. Your vibrating mind modifies the light of consciousness reflected on it. The modified light of consciousness reaches the one toward whom it is directed and impringes on the mirror of his mind. It causes his mind to vibrate according to the modification it undergoes. Thus, it reproduces in him what was mentally affirmed by you. He then goes on to say, your beliefs, your fixed attitudes of mind constantly modify your consciousness as it is reflected on the mirror of your mind. Your consciousness, modified by your beliefs, objectify itself in the conditions of your world. To change your world, you must first change your conception of it. You see, back in the day, the thought transmission would happen, and then I would allow myself to waver, and my friend would always laugh at me about it. This all changed to consistency after I accepted that I already am my ideal now, I am complete inside, I have everything inside, and all those ideal ideas became, as he says, my beliefs, my fixed attitudes of mind, constantly modifying my consciousness and reflecting on the mirror of my mind to objectify itself in the conditions of the world. Thus, for lasting change in your world in relation with others, Change your conception of yourself in relation to others in general, and you'll experience magic wherever you go with others. Neville states, Distance, as it is cognized by your objective senses, does not exist for the subjective mind. So we can look at it like this. We are always imagining how people are. If you imagine them ideally in relation to you and you in relation to them, they show up that way. It has never been known to fail since I started doing this. They also show up with an interesting story of how they were thinking of calling me, they wanted to do the same thing or something like that. The key is in accepting your own suggestion, really listening to yourself and trusting yourself by capturing the feeling of what it would be like 
if it was true. Capture that spiritual sensation and then yield completely to that assumption. Or imagine yourself connecting with them and yield to that assumption. And then go on with your day. Occupy your mind with whatever you enjoy doing, as I did with that text message, and it happens. He says, the word spoken subjectively in quiet confidence will always awaken a corresponding state in the one in whom it was spoken. But the moment its task is accomplished, it ceases to be, permitting the one in whom the state is realized to remain in the consciousness of the state affirmed or to return to his former state. So here we have a wonderful opportunity to affirm the reality of how you desire to be by carrying on an inner conversation, thinking feelingly with them of how you want it to be, and it happens. For example, imagine with me for a moment a time in your life where when you were walking around, everyone seemed to smile at you, come and talk to you. Life felt like one big playground. People from your past all of a sudden started text messaging you, calling you, emailing you, wanting to hang out. Everyone you spoke with reciprocated ideally and conversations flowed effortlessly, automatically, and you felt great. It seemed that others were dancing to the music of your heart. That's telepathy. And I can assure you, these experiences become more and more frequent if you accept that the cause is within and that you are the cause of these wonderful experiences as he encourages here. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on those things. Philippians 4.8 He says, Never accept as true of others what you would not want to be true of you. To awaken a state within another, it must first be awake within you. The state you would transmit to another can only be transmitted if it is believed by you. Therefore, to give is to receive. Such a wonderful epilogue for today's video, what he says here. The state you would transmit to another can only be transmitted if it is believed by you. Therefore, to give is to receive. Giving and receiving is one. Consciousness is one. And so to do unto others lovingly in imagination is to do unto yourself and it plays out accordingly. And that's a wonderful thing. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion to further encourage. You can say, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, the desires of my heart, I think feelingly upon these things and allow others to show up and reflect the love within me. I experience this wherever I go, wherever I am, for consciousness is one. Thus giving and receiving is one in mind, which automatically plays out as my thoughts are transmitted to those who I love, returning back to sender, loving deeds in all that I experience with them from this premise. As all that I experience, that I am. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk with you soon. Take care.